Hey, did you just pick up your ROG Ally? And were you curious, <clears throat> is it powerful enough to actually do VR gaming? I decided to find out. And uh, what I found actually really surprised me. Um, obviously, it, we, we know this is not a, a high-end VR device, but can it do it? And that's what I find out in this video. Obviously, I'm gonna be using the ROG Ally. Uh, but I'm also going to be using the Quest 2. Um, so, you know, low cost headset. Uh, no, I wouldn't say this is low cost, but kind of an entry level gaming device. And we'll be also be using a, a virtual desktop in order to facilitate all of this. I'm also going to be using the official ROG gaming charger dock. And the reason I'm doing this is because this gets me an extra USB port that I can use to run the network over. That's what I'm using here is just a USB Ethernet adapter. And all that's, that's doing is making the connection from the ROG Ally over to the router. So the router talks to the headset and doesn't have to also talk to the ROG Ally over wireless. That's confusing as mud, but uh, if you <laughs> use virtual desktop, you should know basically what I'm talking about. So the two things you need to install to get running is virtual desktop and Steam VR. To get Steam VR, it's really easy. You should basically already have Steam on this thing because that's basically what it's for. Um, but once you're in Steam, just search for Steam VR, download it, and you're good to go. Okay, so on your Ally, you're gonna go to uh, vrdesktop.net and you're gonna go to download streamer app. And this is a great application. It's gonna let it work with a Pico. It's gonna let it work with a Quest 2, Quest Pro. Uh, this is basically the easiest way to get things uh, rolling. You, we can try Link maybe later, but the problem with Link is it's gonna be a little bit more complicated to try to make things work. And once it's installed, uh, it's fine to go ahead and click finish on that. And with Steam VR installed and Virtual Desktop installed, we should be able to test this and see if it actually works. All right, so right now I am in game and it's actually working fairly well. I have the FPS VR uh, frame rate up there so you can see what's going on inside the game, but I, right now it's running on 72 frames per second, and let's see how far we get. Uh, the GPU is about 78 degrees, but you know what? Uh, this is running quite well. And I have the resolution of, at about, I, well, I need to stop focusing on playing and actually do my video. But uh, let's, let's pause here. So. Uh, I have it running at, uh, the resolution is 1816 by 1900. Let's go ahead and try, A, we'll first try upping that. Um, on the Quest, you usually, you know, 2000 by 2000 is generally where you start to think, yeah, like you're not getting much more benefit by upping the resolution more. So, <clears throat> Uh, 2100 by 2100 res. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, that's, that's totally fine. Now, Beat Saber is not one you'd want to up the res for any good reason, but this is actually completely playable. Uh, so, yeah, this is great. I'm going to try upping it to 90 frames per second and see what happens. Now this is, this is a bit more choppy. Um, quite a bit more choppy. But SSW is turned off, so it's forcing the game to kind of try to hit irregular frames. So let's pause and, and turn on SSW again. And that's in, the, that's in the, the virtual desktop menu. And that should clean things up a little bit in terms of motion resolution. So let's let's continue. Yeah, that looks a lot better. However, I can tell that it's dropping dropping frames, doing frame insertion uh, quite a bit more, but it feels a lot better. So 
So yeah, Beat Saber, I would say uh, playable at 72 frames a second pretty easily. Of course, this is quite a basic game, but it does require things to be running well. But uh, let's try another game. Here we are in Rec Room. And uh, it's actually pretty cool. Uh, I have graphics set at medium currently. And we'll kind of, I probably ought to go to low. Let's go to low. And you can see that this is running at 36 frames a second. And it's using uh, Synchronous Space Warp to reproject up to 72. So the 36 feels like 72. Um, it feels fairly smooth. But the cool thing is, it does actually play. For it to be playing on the ROG Ally on integrated graphics, iGPU, is actually pretty crazy. And uh, the GPU memory, which is at four gigabytes of RAM, I'm sure it's using the system memory, um, is completely full at this point. This is a pretty heavy lobby. Um, I should probably mute myself in here. But, uh, anyways, kind of cool to, to see that you can run a full-fledged VR game. Let's try something even more challenging, and I don't think this next one's gonna work, but uh, we can go ahead and see. Maybe we'll maybe we'll be surprised, and it will actually work for us. But uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna try Half-Life Alex next, and it's most likely not gonna run, but we'll do the best we can. <laughs> oh my goodness! I am seeing something. <laughs> No way. No way. Okay, I'm locked at 72 frames a second. This is just the intro. So yeah, I don't I don't think that's going to be sustainable. But wow. Okay. So <laughs> it's it's playing and I have not even adjusted the settings. I'm sure it auto-scaled a lot of things down uh, to low settings, uh, but I'll have to double check that. Um, the load screen on the PC is different. I'm actually in VR, and I can see what's going on. It's a smooth 72 frames per second. Yes, it, the, the image quality is, is turned down. Um, I have it at uh, 1.7 by 1.7. Okay, and we are playing Half-Life Alex here. This is a surprise. Whoa! Okay, this is, I, I, I kind of wasn't expecting, I don't know what the controls are on Quest. Uh, there it is. Please die. There we go. I'm hoping you guys can see this. Um, the frame rate is... I'm going to call it, a, I mean, it's acceptable for, for what we're doing here. I did not expect this to, to actually work, frankly. Um, but there you go. Uh, ROG Ally. Running Half-Life Alex. And it's... It's bouncing around a little bit, but this is this is playable. So again, this is this is running at like 1.7k by 1.7k. So it's not it's not like amazing by any means. That but this is if you wanted to play some VR with like a Quest 2 that you picked up secondhand for a hundred bucks, you could definitely do it. I mean this this is pretty cool. Let me try one more thing because right now we're running we're running, you know, 40 to 50 frames a second. Uh you guys can see that on the screen. Let me see if turning on uh SSW helps us at all. 
because um, that's a setting in virtual desktop and if it works it's going to smooth out the frame rate quite a bit for us so I just set SSW to always enabled and I don't know if it will take but we're going to try okay so if the frame rate's not above oh yeah it's at 36 because we're at 72 right now okay SSW really smooth things out if you're getting motion sickness SSW can really clean it up for you this is this feels smooth now it's only it's only 72 frames per second apparent uh, but it's so it's at 36 and then it's frame doubling so in the VR headset I'm seeing 72 frames per second but this is cool this is working and now that it's smoothed out, I feel like this is actually pretty playable. In fact, I'm getting I'm getting caught up in, in actually playing it, but I'm I'm super impressed that this is working. Wow, what's our temps? 80 degrees. That's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Okay, well, I guess uh, there's another game that we need to test out now, and that is notorious for being a resource hog and very hard to play, and that is VR Chat. So let's go ahead and load that up and see if that does anything at all for us. But I am so surprised that I am in Half Life Alex on the tiny ROG Ally. This is this is cool. I'm excited about this. Here we are in VR chat in a basic world, and it's actually working. Let's turn on a mirror here, and let me show you some of the settings you'll want to change if you actually want to try to play VR chat. Um, so if you go ahead and open your menu, uh, the first thing you want to do is go into settings here. And this is a brand new instance, so we'll have to change a few things. Here's here's what you're going to want to do. The first thing you, you want to do is go to avatar culling and you want to hide avatars by distance okay so uh, with this light of a <laughs> of an install you really don't want a lot of avatars so I'm gonna set like you know four avatars at once so you'll only see the people closest to you otherwise you're probably gonna have a bad time um, another setting that you may want to change and I'll try to hold still so it's not jarring to be watching this but you're gonna to go to graphics and you wouldn't want to turn anti-aliasing off. Things will look worse, but the frame rate uh, will improve uh, slightly. Uh, we'll also turn the graphics down to low. The other thing you might want to do is turn your mirror resolution to half. It's going to make the mirror not look great, but at least your frame rate won't suffer nearly as much. Uh, go back into the settings. We're going to click up here. And the other thing you definitely want to do is turn on the particle limiter that's really going to help your performance. Um, the other thing you may want to do is go into your safety settings and configure a custom safety setting. What you can do with this is make it so you know brand new users you can't actually see their avatar unless you choose to but by default you can keep it off. So for visitors I like turning avatars off for them, new users off. Uh, regular users um, Sometimes you, on this little PC, I'm going to turn that off. Known users, we'll leave that on. Trusted users, a lot of people are trusted. And lights and particles and shaders are very uh, resource intensive. So we're, that's our settings. We're going to turn those off. Friends, everything enabled. Trusted users, not even lights and particles. Uh, you can turn an individual's avatar on and off at will while you're in the game. So turning a lot of these off doesn't mean you're locked into not seeing anybody, but you can choose selectively turning people's avatars on and off. So once you've set your custom settings, we'll choose use this shield level. And with that done, I'm going to try to go into a uh, like a black cat instant. Okay, so here we go. Again, 1.7K by 1.7K per eye, and we're at 72 frames a second. I'm just not trying to push this thing. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, 
with our settings turned down, safety settings turned way up. This is actually running. I, I've tried this on iGPUs before and sometimes it does not work at all. But you know what? With uh, SSW turned on and it running at 36 frames a second, this is, this is sufficient. I mean, this, this actually feels fairly smooth to the point where I'm wondering if I ought to even turn it up. But once we run into some avatars, we might have issues. But, uh, yeah, um, interesting. And like I say, uh, you can turn people's people settings on and off so you can actually see what people look like if you want. And hey, it's it's running. Like this is this is totally fine. Oh great. Now I got to demonetize my video. Uh, so <laughs> There we go. Uh, but but you can you can play. You're not going to have the best experience in the world, but it works. Everything I've tried has works. Okay, so again, just to wrap it up, uh, VR is possible on the ROG Alley. In fact, everything I tested from Half-Life Alex to Beat Saber uh, to even VR Chat would actually run. And I think that speaks to AMD upping their game a little bit on their integrated graphics drivers. And obviously, they have been doing that because of this device and other devices that they want to be selling. But yeah, it, it actually works. Uh, it isn't the best experience in the world. And you'll want to turn down to the very lowest settings. Uh, we're talking 72 frames per second, uh, low settings in VR. But uh, with uh, SSW turned on, which is super useful in scenarios like this, if, if you can maintain, you know, at least 36, 45 frames a second, you're going to be able to, you know, have a pretty smooth experience. And I was blown away that Half-Life Alex actually worked on this thing. So uh, give it a shot, try it out, and uh, tell me what you think, because it's surprising the utility you can get out of this device. And what it really makes me excited for is uh, you talk about, like, next generation Steam Deck. Um, there's a lot of talk that, you know, they're going to build the entire thing into the headset at some point. Well, just imagine that the core components of this are, you know, a year or two down the road are small enough that they're, they'll fit in right inside the headset. Like we're not too far off of that, uh, with the ROG ally. So that's pretty astonishing. And, uh, I didn't think it would actually play so well. Um, so anyways, if you like this video, uh, subscribe to the channel. We'll take a look at VR, tech, handhelds, whatever, all the time. So uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.